And so good evening, everyone, and welcome to class 21 of the Biblical Foundation, Genesis, the Book of Beginnings. What a blessing to be able to discuss this most incredible book of the Bible with you. We're in, we're finishing up Genesis chapter three, and we're just starting Genesis chapter four. So there's so much truth and wisdom. Uh, it is hard to contain within one book and certainly within one class. It's impossible. So let's start. We're going to start with a review of the Garden of Eden, some things we discussed last week. And so, Osvaldo, can you please say uh, Genesis 3.21 in English, please? Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coast of skins and clothe them. Okay, that's coats of skins. Skins unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coast of skins and clothe them. Excellent. So you notice in that word, there's no there's no silent e at the end. Then it would be skines. So so without an e, the e the i is closed. Very good. So let me try that in Portuguese. E fez o Senhor Deus a Adão e a sua mulher túnicas de peles e os vestiu. And don't be shy to correct my Portuguese pronunciation. I'm not shy in, in correcting your English pronunciation, so it's only fair that you correct mine too, okay? So, <laughs> all right. Okay, so next in line, Lucas, can you please read question A in English? With killing an animal, was God encouraging meat? Eating. Very good. That's a long word. Encouraging. Encouraging. Very good. And you can see what's in the middle of that word is the word courage. Encourage. Oh. All right. It's just like the word in Portuguese. And so encourage is to is to uh, uh, incentivize, to motivate. So what do you think? We just saw in Genesis 3.21, uh, God killed an animal in front of Adam and Eve. Imagine, it probably was a horrific scene to see the first killing bef the fir uh, right before them. But here, the question is, was God encouraging meat eating? No. Correct. And why not, Pedro? Because God only says to that our cracks eat, eat meat after the flood. Absolutely right. Do you remember which verse? No. I, I don't remember. Do you remember, Osvaldo? No. Okay. I'm sorry. It's not at all. And we'll get there eventually, the Lord willing. It's it's only, but Pedro's absolutely right. It's after the flood that the that God gives permission to start meat eating. Okay, so I think we changed a little bit. So, uh, Pedro, can you please read Genesis three twenty two in English? And the Lord God said, "Behold, the man is become as one of us." To know good and evil, and and now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Wow, very well pronounced, Pedro. Thank you. So Thank let me you. try that. You're welcome. Let me try that in in uh, Portuguese. Então disse o Senhor Deus, eis que o homem é como um de nós, sabendo o bem e o mal. Ora, para que não estenda a sua mão e tome também da árvore da vida e coma a coma e viva eternamente? 
So uh, obviously the sentence continues, but let's look at this verse uh, with uh, verse, sorry, with question B. So Danny, you're on mute right now, but can you please read question B in English? Yes, I'm right here. Question B. When God says, as one of us, who is it speaking to? Okay. Now, remember, there's a funny phrase if, uh, in English. If I were to say, where did we put my glasses? Where did we put my glasses? And then I go, oh, we put them here. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This is royal speaking with the royal we, as though I am a king, and I can speak in plural. Okay, like we, we just no. So, but in this case, in verse three twenty two, God is not. He speak. It's kind of a royal we. But let's ask, who is he actually speaking to when he says, "As one of us." Do you remember Pedro? He's speaking, yeah. he's speaking to the other people of the Trinity. Absolutely right. So he's speaking to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So remember, while the word Trinity does not enter the Bible anywhere, the concept is throughout the Bible and not just in the New Testament. You can find it implied and evident in the Old Testament as well. Okay, so now, Osvaldo, can you please read question C in English? What properties apparently, apparently does the tree of life have? Very good. So, first of all, when it's a new word, very good, go slowly. So the first one is what? proper proper properly proper properties. Yes, exactly. What property is apparently does the tree of life have? Very good. Okay, so we just saw in in verse three twenty two uh, that the tree of life has a certain quality to it. It, it seems to give certain attributes. So what properties apparently does the tree of life have? Ask again, please. I don't. The question. Yeah, question C. So I'm just asking question C. What properties apparently does the tree of life have? Eternal life. Right? Exactly right. Thank you, Danny. So it's mm -hmm. live forever. It says it right there at the, end, at the end of verse 22. Okay. And so now uh, the order changed a little bit. Danny, can you please read Genesis? 323 in English. Sure. 323. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Perfectly pronounced, Daddy. Danny, I don't think your English is rusty at all. Congratulations. <laughs> because you are very, very generosity first, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sincerely, <laughs> sincerely. So let me try it. Let me try it. And if I can pronounce it as well in Portuguese. O Senhor Deus, pois, o lançou fora do jardim do Éden para lavrar a terra de que fora tomado. All right. Lavrar a terra. All right. So let's go to uh, the second page where we have question D. 
And that would be Lucas. Can you please read question D in English? What was the problem with leaving Adam and Eve stay in the garden? Very good. Now let's go back to that word letting. Here's another, you said leading. So first of all, that it would be like a, to be leet, it would be L-L-E-E-T. All right. It's only one E. And then they also make it very clear with two T's, then with two consonants, then the vowel sound is often, almost always closed. So instead of leading, it's letting. So closed E, letting. N I. N I reading, letting. Oh no, leading. Are you what? What's the verb you used? In I reading, leading. Uh, letting. Letting. Yes, because two letting. T's. So let. Okay, so to let is to like uh, per permit. Leading no. Leading no. Leading. Well, it doesn't say leading. Le leading is another word. Ah, leading. Okay. Okay. So leading is to to show someone the way, and this is letting, which is permitting, permitting. Ah, okay, letting. At, yeah, permitting Adam and Eve. So the question is, what was the problem with letting Adam and Eve stay in the garden? Okay. Pedro or Lucas, you remember from last class? If if Adam and Eve stay at stay at more time at the Garden of Eden, they were eat from the the life from from the tree of life, and and they and they they would have. The eternal life. Yes, wow. An and eternal... It, go ahead. And it will not be good to, to them. Absolutely right. Because it would be eternal life with sin. <laughs> right? And also, uh, God gave them a punishment, which was death. And so he can't then let them reach out and get eternal life, then then the punishment is no longer valid. So, but most importantly, he didn't want them to live forever in sin. That would be very sad. Okay, so Pedro, can you please read question E? Did Adam need to, to till the ground inside the Garden of Eden? Okay, so remember the verse 23, it said, sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So is this new or was, was Adam already tilling the ground inside the Garden of Eden? He was, he killed, killed. He is correct, the promise. Yeah, he tilled. was, yes, tilling. He, he tilled, past tense, the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. Adam tilled the ground in the garden of the Eden. Okay, I kind of agree. Because, yes. you know, that there, there was, there was a, you know, maybe he only ate from fruit from the trees, but I think maybe there also was uh, food coming up from the ground. So maybe he did need to. So just to help in the pronunciation, so 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 T I L E would be tile. So open eye. So obviously with T I L L, then it's a closed eye. So it's till. 
Yeah. Okay, so once again, the two consonants tell you that the vowel is closed. So till instead of tile. Uh, and then let's go to Osvaldo. Can you please read question F in English? If so, why might tilling the ground outside the garden different? Okay, and I'm sorry, I forgot the, the verb there. Be different. Very good. <laughs> okay. And so what do you think? So if Pedro is correct and they were tilling the ground, Adam tilled the ground in the garden, what's different with tilling the ground outside the garden? Danny, do you want to say something? <laughs> ben, I, I'm so sorry, but I need to go because a friend of mine is here in my house. <laughs> okay, so you got sorry. a visitor. Well, so, yes. nice, so nice to have you here, <laughs> even if briefly. And what I'm a blessing. So... What a blessing. Thank and maybe you. we'll see you, the Lord willing, next week. Amen. But uh, could you send me the record, please? With After pleasure. the meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank God you bless so you. Much. With God pleasure. bless you all. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. God you. bless you. Later. See you later. See you later. <laughs> all bye <day>. bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Next bye. Time. bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Uh, okay. So, all the men here. Uh, once again, all men. All men here. Okay. All macho men. Very good. So let's answer question F. If so, why might tilling the ground outside the garden be different? Will it be more difficult? Yeah. So now it's hard work, right? Yes. Okay. The, the ground is cursed. Uh, there's thistles and thorns. There's sweat, okay? So it's a lot more difficult. It's hard work now to, to, to eat, to live, to, to uh, sustain life now takes a lot more work. In the garden, it was all easy. It was like, ah, <laughs> okay? It was like uh, on the beach and everything is given to you. No longer, no longer. Okay, so, ben, yes. English is so difficult. Sometimes. <laughs> oh, but you make it I sound easy. I don't have vocabulary. Ah. I don't have vocabulary. Patience. You, you, Pedro and Lucas, are talky, talky, talky. I, I am silent because... I don't have vocabulary. He talk for at, us. At the beginning, I, I I've not very vocabulary too, and then I will I will, I I stayed studying more English with with Ben. I and then I I had more vocabulary. Hmm. And you learned more vocabulary. Very good. I'm feeling. Yes. I'm feeling so stupid. No. And remember, this is what your third class, Osvaldo. Patience. Second class. Second class. Okay. Yes. Because remember, the second class. Part today. of part of this works. It's one hour of total immersion. Okay. And I try to write out some words and some phrases that aren't on the paper, right? Because that's why we, we do the paper, because then we read the paper and it's there. And it's, so it's easier to understand. To listen to me now, it's harder because it's not written anywhere. So you have to listen, okay? But with patience, 
because uh, okay. it happens with total immersion. You listen, listen, it's frustrating. Okay, frustrating. But one day it goes like, bing, and you understand 90%. <laughs> okay. In Jesus' so, name. Exactly, in Jesus' name, with the help of the Holy Spirit. So let, let's let's continue. So that was all. Lucas, Lucas, can you read Genesis 3.24? And by the way, Osvaldo, your English is great. Your English is very good. Serious. Yes. You speak. You're courageous. You speak well. It's hard. What's, what's more of a challenge is understanding, comprehension. Okay. Now, okay. Yes. Comprehension. When we speak new words and we speak quickly. Okay. Comprehension is difficult, but that come, that's the easiest to correct. It's harder to correct no courage, don't want to say anything, you don't you, know, you don't want to reply to any questions. Comprehension is the easiest. That comes naturally. Okay, so Lucas, can you please read Genesis 3:24 in English? So he drove out the men, and he placed it at the east of the Garden of Eden, turbans and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Very good. Now there's that name of the angels that's a little, and it's chair you beams, chair you beams. Chair beams. Very good. So let me try that now in Portuguese. E havendo lançado fora o homem, pós querubins ao oriente do jardim do Éden, e uma espada inflamada que andava ao redor para guardar o caminho da árvore da vida. All right. So let's go. So Pedro, can you please read question G in English? Why did God need to drive out the man? Okay, what do you think? Deixa eu ver se eu entendi. Por que Deus precisou se retirar do homem? É isso que ele quis dizer? Exactly correct. Okay, very good. And remember, you can see the, the translation of the verse when I read the verse in English. A havendo lançado fora. Okay, so same, same. So drive out the man is lançado fora. So you're absolutely correct. So what do you think? Why did God need to drive out the man? Well, Pedro already gave one reason. For man's own good, right? So that he wouldn't sin. say it again, Osvaldo. He caused the sin. Exactly right. So he, he part of the punishment was to leave the the garden, and this implies that Adam didn't not did not want to go. And so to, to drive out is like. Get out of here. Okay, and Adam's He's like, obligated. yeah, exactly, obligated. obligated. And it wasn't obligated. just that. He didn't see, God didn't say, hey, can you please leave? And then Adam goes, oh, okay, bye, da, 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 da. No. God had to drive him out. Because Adam's like, I don't want to go outside. Please, 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 I love the garden. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Okay, so Adam wanted to stay, but God said, no, your punishment, part of your punishment is to leave. Okay, so Osvaldo, can you please read question H in English? Question H. H. Who, are, who are cherubims? 
Very, very Hi. good. Oh, did I leave something in there? Oh, that, that's part of the answer. <laughs> ah, okay. Who are cherubims? Very Cherub. good. Yeah, C-H is ch, like church, cherubims. Cherubims. Very good. Okay. So, so it looks like I left the answer there. So we already know they're angels, but they're not just normal angels. Apparently, they're the highest angels. And they're associated with the immediate presence of God. Wow, interesting. Okay, so now, Lucas, can you please read question I in English? Why was it necessary to appoint a cherubim to guard against entrance? Very good. Very well pronounced. Okay, so why did God decide there has to be a cherubim to guard, to keep out? The garden. Mm. Well, there's some things we can uh, ded deduce from this. Deduce. 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 Yeah, deduce is uh, draw a conclusion. Yes. Okay. Conclusion. Okay, deduce that the garden continued. Okay, the garden did not go away. The garden continued. And so God had to put a cherubim to guard the entrance. Why? Because... Adam and Eve might come back. They might try to enter the garden. Lost paradise. Okay, remember that's what the Garden of Eden is often called. Lost paradise. Paradise. Yeah. Paradise. Paradise. Excellent. Okay, so it existed. The garden existed for some time. And this was then to keep Adam and his descendants, to keep all men from returning to the garden. It's like no one is returning to the garden. So, Pedro, can you please read question J in English? If cherubims are usually in presence, in presence of God, what does that imply here? Okay, so if the garden is, is existing for some time and there's a cherubim guarding the entrance and a cherubim is most often in the immediate presence of God, what does that mean? What does that imply? What does the imply here yeah any thoughts pedro it implies that god was god was at the garden absolutely in the garden, in the garden. Yes. In the garden. exactly in the garden. Yeah. you know and here's the thing very good god is in the garden we all know that god is omnipresent okay but in some way, remember, God was omnipresent, and at the same time, he walked with Adam in the garden. Okay, so maybe it was the pre-incarnate Jesus. Okay, we don't know, but God walked in the garden with Adam, and if there's a Cherubim beam protecting the entrance it sounds like god continued in some ways his presence in the garden 
Okay, so let's go now. Osvaldo, can you please read question K in English? Hey, why would God do that? Why would God do that? Okay, why would he stay in the garden? Why, why would God still be in the garden? Take me at sky. He could what? Sorry. Nada não. Deixa para lá. Esquece. Bobagem. <laughs> okay. Any thoughts? Lucas? Pedro? So why did God stay in the garden? What purpose? Hmm. I don't know. Okay. I don't have any idea. Okay, there's no definite answer, but we can guess. Perhaps to meet his people. Hmm. Okay. Remember, he could be in the garden, and maybe the people returned to the gate. And what is this like? This would be like, okay, holy of the holies. Oops. Now remember, in the Old Testament, in the tabernacle Holy of the Holy, yeah, in in the tabernacle, okay, tabernacle, exactly. So the Jews would come inside the temple, and the holies of the holies is where the priest could meet God once a year. Okay, and that's in Exodus. 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 Speak again, please. Okay, so... Tabernacle. Okay, tabernacle. Tabernacle. Yeah. Remember... Tabernacle. When, yeah. Tabernacle. When, the, when the word is similar to Portuguese, it's most difficult. So it's tabernacle. Tabernacle. Yeah. Tabernacle. And so in Exodus 25, verses 17 to 22, it explains how the, Jew, the, the Jewish priest could come and see or visit God in the tabernacle at the Holy of Holies once a year. So maybe, maybe that's what God was doing here. All right. He already was creating a type. Okay, so maybe that's where that's where the Jews uh, met God at certain times. So now, Lucas, can you read question L in English? Does the garden still exist? If not, when did it go away? Very good. So does the garden still exist? What do you think? Yes. You think the Garden of Eden still exists? Is it? Is Where? it? Hmm. Where? Where? Yeah. Is a good ask. Where? Yeah. Is a, a good, good ask. Question. Where? <laughs> I think nearby Jordania. Israel. Okay, yeah, Jordan. And those are all different. Jordan, Israel. Israel. Okay. All right, but maybe Oswald, Here, you're, by there. maybe you're thinking of Noah's Ark. Okay. Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. Ark. We, we, ah. we, okay, we believe ah, Noah's Ark yes. is up in the mountains no. of Ararat. In Turkey. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Yes, Pedro. Noah. It's Noah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Arca de Noé. All right. So remember, we Noah's try Ark. to okay, we try to use English to explain. So we say, ah, what is Noah's Ark? Well, Noah saved his family in the flood in the ark. And then we go, ah, Noah's okay. Ark. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so... Ark the Covenant. Ark the Covenant. Exactly right. 
Okay, so Pedro, do you do you think the Garden of Eden still exists? No. Okay, so I would tend to agree with Pedro. I, I think it served its purpose. But then, if it does not exist, when did it go away? And I'm trying to write out more of my, what I say out loud. If not, when did the garden go away? When when the flood happened. Exactly right. At the, at the flood. Yeah. All right. Because the flood changed everything. It changed the entire topography of Earth. Okay, the entire topography of Earth was changed. All mountains were changed. Everything was changed. Oceans, everything changed. It was a very violent global flood. Very violent. Okay, so let's now, we're going to move. We're flood. Doing, we, yeah, flood. Flood is. Yes. No, that's blood. That's blood ah, is blood. Oh, okay. Flood is ah, okay. is water. Too much water Shh. rising and rising. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So congratulations. We just finished our our review and last study of Genesis chapter three, and now we're moving on to Genesis chapter one four. I mean Genesis chapter four. So Pedro. So we're now we're in the post garden economy. Okay, an economy now is often used for just finance, financial economy. But no, economy is a world system. Okay, so let's so we're looking at the post garden economy. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Pedro, can you please read Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 in English? And Adam, no, no, Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bare Cain, 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 and said, I have gotten a man from, from the Lord. Okay. The third word is new. Okay. So it's, it's kind of funny. New. because Yeah. It has that K there, but it's pronounced exactly the same as the word, the adjective new. So a new car, an old car, but to know, so new is the past tense of no. Okay, and, and also, as you know, the verb no also sounds exactly like the word no. <laughs> so in English, okay, you have to pay attention to context, okay, because many words are pronounced the new, same. New, 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 no, oh. no. Okay, yeah, new and new, same pronunciation. No and no, same pronunciation. Same pronunciation. But, but very different word. So you have to pay attention to context. Homophonics. Oh, huh? good one. Homophonics. Okay, that's a that's a new word for me. That that sounds like probably homophonetics. No, maybe it is homophonics. I don't know. So we'll we'll see if that's a, a an English word or just a uh, a coming uh, borrowed from the Portuguese. But very good. Okay, so let's now. So we just look. Oh, I have to read this in Portuguese. E conheceu Adão a Eva, sua mulher, e ela concebeu e deu à luz a Caim, e disse. Alan say do senhor um homem. <coughs> Excuse me. One suggestion. Yes, please. I think I think in the last verse you said Alan say. Alan say. But it's Al can say. Oh, thank you. Al can say. Where where is that? Which verse? The last the last verse. 24. Oh, no, I see. Al ah, yeah, in the verse I just read. Al can say. Yes. Okay, thank you. Much appreciated. So now, Osvaldo, can you please read question one in English? 
what does the biblical the term to know mean here? What does the biblical term to know mean here? Very good. So, so Genesis 4, 1 says, and Adam knew his wife. What does the biblical term to know mean here? All right. Normally, to know someone is like to meet someone. Okay, right? To know someone is to meet someone. To know usually means that uh, you you've met them and you've known each other for a while to know someone usually means ah oh, yes i know who danny is danny is my friend in belo horizonte i know her okay that's the modern usage in this biblical usage what does to know mean i don't know any synonyms okay synonym okay i got a good one for synonyms. you because we we want to keep it uh, uh, biblical and it's the same means. It's the same means. Okay, maybe, but here here's a good word for it: to perform marriage duties. Okay, that's the best way to describe it. Okay, so what's the duty of a husband and wife? To have children. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, so so in this the sense, son. yes. Yeah, so to know is the union of a husband and wife in order to perform marriage duties. Uh, so let's. That's very good. And now, Lucas, can perform you please marriage duties. say that again? We we don't say say no. <laughs> I thought I heard someone say marriage Not duties. Anything we say, anything. <laughs> okay, maybe it was me. It was an echo. All right, so so let's go now to question two. Lucas, can you please read question two in English? Why would Eve explain? I have gotten a man from the Lord. Very good. Now, I think you said claim, but it's exclaim. Exclaim. Yeah, very good. Okay, which is, is, as you know, very similar to the Portuguese word. So why would Eve explain, I have gotten a man from the Lord? Oh, because the Lord helped, helped her. Help. Yes. But helped her in what way? I don't know. Okay, but I think you're 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 on the right track. He helped her to give life. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. And so remember, the original sin caused death. 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 Exactly. Okay, so, so, uh, so it's understandable if Eve was afraid, that's it. No children, no more life, all right, death reigns. Okay, so she was relieved. She was grateful. Okay, that the punishment was not total. Okay, so so that yes, God, remember, God made a promise about her seed. And now he's fulfilling that promise. Fulfilling that promise. Okay, so that now she is bearing children for the first time child so he's fulfilling the promise he made and she's relieved all right she's oh okay wow the uh thank god thank god it's like i i i'm i could bring a man a boy 
uh, into this world. So let's read the next one. Pedro, can you please read Genesis 4, 2 in English? And she again bare his brother Abel. Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain, Cain was a tiller of the ground. Okay. So with those two E's in sheep, then the E is definitely open. So I think you see you were closer to she, shep, she, it's so it's sheep. Okay, so when there's two E's, then you know it's an open, open E. All right, so let me try this in, in Portuguese. E deu a luz mais o seu irmão, e deu a luz mais a seu irmão Abel. E Abel foi pastor de ovelhas. E Caim foi lavrador da terra. In the Portuguese, the is Abel. Abel, We're from at the, Okay. At the, at the finish. Okay, very good. So the, the, the emphasis. Yes, the emphasis. The emphasis is on the end. The end. So instead of Abel, it's, it's uh, Abel. Whereas in English, yes. it's able. <laughs> and you pronounce that right. So very good. All right. So here we go. Well, this is interesting now. All right. So she had a second son and his name was uh, Abel. So let's look at. So Osvaldo, can you please read question three in English? Three? Yes, oh, okay. please. Question three in English. First, the second generation of making mankind. mankind, 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 the second generation of mankind already had working specialization. Why is that significant? Very good. Lots of big, long words, very well pronounced. And remember, when there's a new word like mankind, you can, how to pronounce it, if you separate mankind into two words, man and kind, mankind. it's pronounced, it's just, it's pronounced just like the shorter words put together. Mankind. Okay. So, so that's uh, the easiest thing is to a new word to separate and pronounce the smaller words as you already know them and then put it together. So very good. So so this is, so what do we have here? We have uh, Abel was a pastor, a keeper of sheep, and Cain was a farmer, a tiller of the ground. Okay, so we have a, we have a farmer and we have a pastor. So we have work specialization. They weren't all doing the same thing. All right, so Cain and Abel didn't go both to farm and both to be a pastor. They work specialization. Now, why is that significant? That's a tough question. Okay. Long time. All right, so I think that is something in, uh, <laughs> in all Osvaldo's. That's where we heard the other one. Something repeats there. I think from his cell phone. It like it picks tough it up. Question. Tough, tough question. Yeah, tough, tough question. Tough question. Okay. Tough. Tough. Tough, or tough. tough, like an F. Tough. Yeah, tough. so it'd be pronounced okay. like tough, tough, but no, it's Tough. G H. Tough question. Yeah. It's pronounced like an F. And remember, P H is also uh, pronounced like an F. Many ah, times. okay. Okay, so English is very irregular. Like Portuguese, very irregular. Lots of strange things in English. So, why is work specialization significant? I'll tell you why. What does the world think? how man evolved. 
What does the world, what do the evolutionists say? What do all teachers say in schools, in colleges, in universities? Did man start work specialization right away? No. What do they believe? The man, that the man was evolu evolving, 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 evolving. Okay, but what? So they think. How did man start? So, so they think primitive man started doing what? Was he a farmer? No. no. They don't say that. What do they say man was at first? He's a hunter and gatherer. Okay? So the world says that man was a hunter. And remember, getter. and they were like He's nomadic. Together. Yeah. Hatter is together. To gather is to bring things together, to gather. Okay. And so they thought that he was nomadic. And so they say the world says man was a hunter. So he was more like whom? He was like Abel. All right, so he he was he was going and like like Indians in the American West, and all right, okay, the Indians on horseback and and they would hunt, they would they would hunt buffalo, and bring the buffalo back. They were hunters and gatherers. The Bible says no, and and according to the world. Only later did the nomads stop hunting only and started to farm, okay? Because to farm, you need to plant in one season and then wait. Wait two, three months for another season, okay? So farming involves being settled. Okay. Settle. Okay, settled. To settle in one place, to stay in one place. So the world says one thing, the Bible says, nope. From the very beginning, they were they weren't they weren't hunters and gatherers. They were hunters, pastors. For, in fact, they were not hunters. They were pastors and and uh, farmers. Okay, so let's finish up. Now we have, uh, that was, Lucas, can you please read Genesis 4, verses 3 to 4? A good long two verses for you. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first plains of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect into Abel and to his offering. offering 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 okay and it's it's uh it's able in english able. So, yeah the emphasis open a it's able very good let me try that in portuguese three and four e aconteceu ao cabo de dia de dias que caim trouxe do fruto da terra uma oferta ao senhor e Abel também trouxe dos primogênitos das suas ovelhas e da sua gordura. E atentou o Senhor para a Abel e para a sua oferta. Ok, things are already happening. 
Any suggestions? No, very good pronunciation. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Only the Lord provides. And so, Pedro, can you please read question four in English? Where did the need to where did the need to make an offering unto the Lord come from? Okay. So what 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 is this? So here we are, we're we're in chapter four. Things are happening quickly. Right? So uh first of all, Abel. No, sorry, Cain is born. Nine, ten months later, a year later, Abel is born. They grow up to own to, to men. They specialize. Right? So uh so Abel becomes a pastor of the sheep and Cain becomes a farmer of the ground. Where does it say you need to make an offering unto the unto the Lord? How did they know? The answer is we don't know. All right, so the Bible it doesn't clarify everything. But obviously the Lord told them at some point. It's not written in the Bible. Okay. So we don't know where it was com commanded. But now why? Why did they need to make an offering? Aqui está aqui está as instruções. Okay, so why did they need to make an offering? Just because God was a great guy and they wanted to give him a gift? What do you think, Pedro? I think that is because the sin, the sin that, that entered the world. Absolutely right. I think so, too. So it's because of original sin. So yes, we now see for the first time an offering to God because of sin. So were, were Cain and Abel already sinning or were they perfectly innocent? Already sinning. Every man after, uh, is now born to sin. It's in their DNA. It's it's they, they it's it's the it's the the Adam's sin is in all of his descendants. E Eve's sin is in all of her descendants. Only so, the genetics. Exactly, it's part of our genetics. It's in our genes. Genes. Okay. And my, so genes sounds like blue jeans, but it's it's uh, pronounced the same, but a different word, right? So blue jeans no, okay. is what we wear, and the genes are in our body. All right. So uh so absolutely right, Pedro. So this is because of original sin, but we don't know when, but God obviously ordered it. Now here's a the last question is a is another tough question. So Osvaldo, can you please read question five in English? What day of the week and year did this offering the possible occur? Okay, very good. So what day what is occur? Yep, yeah, very good. Occur. I uh, did this occur. Offering? Oh, and I forgot a, a why. A possibly occur. And so, any guesses? Again, the Bible didn't say when it was commanded. It doesn't say. It doesn't say why it was commanded, but I think it's obvious. And Pedro, I think, 
said it correctly, because of sin. So, but what day of the week might it be? And where did this offering occur, perhaps? Potiblaim occurred at at the Saturday, Saturday. Okay. Or let's let's be uh let's call it the seventh day. Yes, yeah, the seventh day. Okay. And I believe you're right. In the Jewish calendar, Saturday is the seventh day. But because now in the Christian calendar, Sunday is the seventh day. It's uh, but you're absolutely right. So back then it probably was the Saturday, but let's call it the seventh day or the Sabbath. And that's very good. And we're just guessing, but that's if they're working six days a week, then on the seventh day, the rest day is when you can make an offering to God. So I agree entirely. Now, where where possibly did they do this? At their home, in the middle of the field, or somewhere special? Okay, and so, Abba. so remember, who are they making this offering to? To God. To God. To God. Exactly, and 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 uh, and, and it says, you know, unto the Lord. So that's that's. Uh, <laughs> remember, where do we think God was at this time? Physically, he's omnipresent. He okay, but where did we just say at the beginning of the class? Where was God? In the Garden of Eden. Absolutely right. So we're it's a, only a guess, but now doesn't it make sense that they were then on the seventh day, bringing their offering to God? Where at the gate? To the garden. Okay. To the garden. Okay, because God was there. So you they so so they they couldn't go inside the garden. They could not go through the gate. There's a cherubim, right, with, with swords. But God was there and they could bring their offering to God at the gate. Okay, so that is just supposition. Okay, it's just a guess, a supposition, but it's a good guess. Okay, so we can... Ah, what is guess? Guess is um, you don't know, but you guess something. You think possibly is a guess. So, like, tomorrow, I guess I'm going to wake up at 7 a.m., I don't know. Uh, all right. So guessing is to say, I think this will happen. Mm, I think okay. this is true. Okay. So, uh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Remember, so I try to explain it in English. Instead of jumping to the Portuguese word, I try to explain in English. So because that's for advanced students. Advanced students, you you explain everything in English in different ways to answer the question. All right, so that's it. So amazing. So Cain and Abel are already bringing offerings to God, perhaps on the seventh day, perhaps at the gate to Eden. And yet something is wrong. Something is very wrong, and we're going to discuss that next week. So things are already in bad, sh in a bad shape. Okay, <laughs> things are already no longer going to plan. <laughs> All right, and we'll discuss this next week. But God accepts Abel's farm offering, and He rejects. Cain's sheep offering, 
Okay, and so next week okay. we'll discuss that and see why. So any okay. any questions Man. in English? No, not yet. Pedro, Lucas, any questions in English before we stop the video? No, any questions? 